lying to me this whole time. I wasn't lying. I was encouraging. That's not true. You were lying to be encouraging. You know what? As an actor, Mark isn't always great. So the times when you don't think he's good, what do you say to him? You were so fantastic. Really? <gasps> Hello and welcome to Washington Post Live. I'm Ann Hornaday, Chief Film Critic here at The Post. And today I am truly delighted to be joined by actors Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Tobias Menzies. They are the stars of the new film, You Hurt My Feelings, which is coming to theaters on May 26th. I could not wait to tell everybody about it. I'm so glad it's coming. Julia, Tobias, welcome to Washington Post Live. Thank you. Great. It's good to see both of you. Um, Julie, as I just intimated, I first saw this movie at Virtual Sundance this year and did Handsprings. I've been a longtime fan of Nicole Hall of Center, and this did not disappoint. And of course, I was not alone. It, it received a great enthusiastic response. What do you think um, clicks with people, you know, with her movies? Um, well, I, I Nicole um, is so skilled, really, I think, genius at exploring character and the minutia in human relationships. Um, and I think that's what people respond to. Very often her movies have small behavior, behavioral bits and bobs that really speak to much larger issues. Um, uh, and I, and it's really, and this particular film is really a meditation on, uh, honesty and truth in relationships. And it, and it's a very good meditation. Uh, it's really funny. And, uh, I don't know, I think, uh, there's, there's nobody like her as a filmmaker. So, um, I, I know that both Tobias and I were and are delighted to have done this with her for sure. And T Tobias, you play Don, who's a therapist married to Beth, played by Julia. They have a very loving and enduring marriage. Um, but Don is starting to have nagging doubts about his own um, uh, his own competence as a therapist. Was this the first Nicole Hall of Center script you you'd ever read? Uh, yes. I mean, I knew her work and uh, 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 I've loved her films over the years, but... Um... Yeah, it was the first time I'd sort of seen uh, her writing on the page. And yeah, it was everything I hoped it might be. And What's yeah, that just like? I'm so curious as an actor to read a Nicole, you know, um, is it a different, exp you know, when you're reading, are you are you sensing something different? Tell me about that experience. Um, I mean, the thing I uh, respond to is there's a real um, authentic voice there, a real precision about the ideas who they are, what's going on, uh, you know, she, she just thinks very deeply about uh, character and intentions and then how that plays out in their behavior. Um, she's just a very, very good writer. Um, and it's also properly funny um, from the get go. So that's always and that's a that's a rare thing, I think, in scripts. Um, and so, yeah, it was very interesting to see actually how close the scripts are to um, the, the, the world that she then creates in her movies. And Indeed, I think that's the other question. Add to that too, that yeah. I think N Nicole, to your point, Tobias, that she really straddles the drama comedy, uh, the, those two genres, she straddles them both. And that's another uh, sort of treasure of, of her filmmaking is that she's able to do both at once. And that's what's Indeed. really fun as an actor, too. It's a true tightrope. And I think it's so, it, you know, she makes it look so easy and you make it look so, you know, she allows her actors to make it look so easy that the audience thinks it easy. And I think it's probably the hardest thing in the world. You know, it's much harder than CGI special, you know, these blockbusters and things, you know. I mean, right, these but, are the real yeah. special effects is, you know, being able to, <laughs> to stick that landing is just incredible. Yeah. Um, Julia, you, you do play Beth, who is a, a writer and she teaches a creative writing class and the, the inciting incident, you know, what, what kind of gets all the comedy and drama really ginned up is when she inadvertently overhears Don give a, a honest reaction to her latest book and it just sends everything into, um, it spirals into chaos. 
Is that an experience that you have any personal relation to or memory of? Well, happily, I can say that I do not have, uh, I, I have not had that exact experience, but I can easily fantasize if I were to have that experience, how devastating that would be. You know, when you, in in this film, uh, Beth and Don have a very healthy marriage and um, and they've been together for years and years and years. So there's a lot of trust and respect um, that has been baked in over a long period of time. So for, for it, it's it, this this horrible um, dishonest move that he makes. It's almost like an infidelity. It feels it and and it it turns everything so upside down for her. I can understand why that would be if the person you trust above all people turns out not to be telling you the truth about something so fundamental about your own self. I think it might you might not know which you know which way the sky is, which way is the ground. Your your you, your world would be rocked to the core. Yeah, right. But of course, you know. Beth as a writer and both of you as actors, and I relate to it too. It's, it's, you know, there is, um, what Dawn is trying to do is shore her up and make it possible for her to do her, you know, give her that strength and that self-confidence. Um, because we are, we do rely on validation, you know, love it or hate it. Tobias, does that ring true to you? Yeah. I mean, that's what I love about the film is it doesn't have any easy answers. So um, yeah, because in the same film, you have the brilliant Jeannie Berlin playing um, Beth's mother, and she's pretty honest, but that's also in its different way uh, complicated and not very easy. So it's not like just saying the truth all the time is the solution. So, yeah, and I mean, and the other thing to say about it is that uh, I think with all artistic endeavours, uh, there are certain people who you trust a lot with you know sharing that with and so i think that part you why it's such a devastating thing that happens is you know uh, you know beth trusts don with the, the, that intimate sort of exposure of her work and that's why it feels like such a particular betrayal i think right and you know this also gets to being defined by one's work and i did see a quote good old imdb i checked and there's a quote from you tobias saying that you live and die by how well you act is that do you did you say that and do you believe it oh, and what gosh. does that mean <laughs> um i fear i may i mean i may well have said that probably when i was young and very gauche um do i stand <laughs> by it really i mean um, um, yes. Can we you pretend do? I didn't say it? Can we do that? Yeah, I don't think you know what, said. It's all about self-deception and protecting everybody's self-deception. So yes, yes, you know, what, 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 what? <laughs> Oh no, it's live. No, I will. Did you want to say something, Julia? I heard you try to get in I, there. I think, I think, um, he never said that. He's too, he's too smart to have said something. You're right. That it's a good point to buy it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Julia, Anthony Bregman, you know, Nicole's longtime producer and uh, the producer, producer of this film recently told the New York Times that it felt like you and Nicole were, were uh, separated at birth. And of course, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time you worked with her was on the lovely and sublime Enough Said with the great James Gandolfini. Tell us about your relationship with Nicole and how it's, you know, how you met and how it's developed and whether you do feel that same sisterly bond. I do feel a sisterly bond with Nicole. We first met on Enough Said. Um, and I remember commenting to her after we we had this lunch, we were talking about the script and, and, and the lunch went on for a long time. And I felt, had this feeling like, how is it that our lives have not crossed until this moment uh it, we we I, I feel a kinship with her and then and that's really played out in all of the work that we've done together now um i we have a like-mindedness about material that we respond to about performance about <laughs> jokes about dramatic moments we are i think we think very much alike 
And when we don't, I'm really interested to know her point of view. And likewise, it, it feels very, um, uh, I don't know, we're, we're kind of doing a, a good, we're good dance partners. You know, I think it, it works well together and, and um, we work well together. And I just like being with her. She's a nice girl, woman. She's wonderful. <laughs> I can I can vouch for that. I've, I've had the pleasure of interviewing her. I take every chance I can to interview her because she is such great company and so brilliant. Also, yeah. I just want to say, said enough said, which has my one of my all time favorite movie lines. What the hell is Cherville? I just I I think it's um, one of my favorite lines of all time. <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. That's a t- quintessential Nicole Hall of Center line. And you deli- the- you just you delivered it perfectly. You spoke for all of us, Julia. <laughs> you know, the other thing about Nicole that I happen to know or that she has said is that she draws a lot of inspiration from her own friends, you know, um, which kind of makes it fraught to be her friend because you never know if something that you did or said or, you know, one of your foibles is going to end up on the big screen. Do you Are you friendly with her off screen and, and have you ever seen anything of yours kind of show up later in a character? Um, I I am friendly with her off screen for sure. I mean, I think there's a lot of I'm 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 trying to think here on my feet, but I think there's a lot of of me in these in certainly in this script that we did, and that that isn't to say my behavior. Let's just put it that way. I think she she writes towards sort of behaviors of mine a, a lot of the time. That's been that's my experience. Yeah. Right. And Tobias, so this is really yeah. a department. And also, kudos to you for the the that mid Atlantic American accent. You just it's it's how do you find that? And and I mean, I would never ever have known that you weren't that guy. Yes, I mean it's the first time I've done an American accent on screen. So yeah, I was uh, very excited, but a little nervous to do it, and also to sort of you know, I, the, a lot of my favorite films are. Um, indie films from from the 70s and 80s new york and so to yeah to sort of make a contribution to that canon and to work with someone like uh, nicole and to work with julia to go to you know to such queens of that uh um filmmaking um was a real thrill but i didn't want to um well let's put it politely screw it up um, you Again, you you stuck that landing absolutely brilliantly. You, you mentioned earlier, Julia, that this is that Nicole's work and this movie being part of it is is about minutiae and kind of mundanity and those moments of daily life, um, just getting th- that people just need to get through to get to the next moment, which also calls to mind Seinfeld, right? I mean, that was very much about that sa- is very much that same observational, behavioral comedy, and of course that was such an enormous hit, but somehow that sensibility is struggling more on the big screen than it does on the small screen. And I just wonder if you have any theories about thoughts about that in terms of garnering a huge audience, you know, that, that massive audience and that massive appeal. Yeah. I don't know. I sure hope people, I, I, I yearn to see films like this film, you hurt my feelings. Uh, Honestly, if I weren't in it, I would be going to see it because this is something, this is the kind of entertainment that I love, sort of adult, thoughtful and um, uh, films. Um, I, I, uh, and, and that isn't to say that uh, there isn't a place for all sorts. I mean, I'm, of course, there's a place for all sorts of films. Uh, the entertainment industry is kind of reeling right now in a lot of ways. I don't need to tell you, I'm sure. And, and so I can't even begin to um, hypothesize as to w- why these films are f- fewer and fewer and far between, uh, except to say that I hope they don't go away <laughs> because I think, um, you know, I-, I love these kinds of, of thought provoking movies. Indeed. Well, and speaking of the writer's strike, what what is I mean, what's your life like during a strike like this? And tell us, you know, if this is your chance to make any kind of statement you would like. Well, I certainly I personally very much support the writer's strike and uh, I very much hope they get what they so absolutely deserve. Um, and 
I don't know. I mean, we have a couple of other uh, pending potential strikes coming down the pike with the Directors Guild and then, of course, the Screen Actors Guild. And it's very much the same issues across the board, um, which is that the sort of the middle class in our industry is getting squoezed, as it were, and that's um, unjust and shouldn't be the case. Um, so I'm hopeful that maybe in solidarity we can accomplish what we need to do here, which is just to have a, a just and equitable uh, paycheck for those who deserve it. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to the artificial intelligence issue, this is exactly the kind of movie that ChatGPT cannot write. <laughs> yeah, ChatGPT has no place on this film. <laughs> Would not be a <laughs> no, welcome yeah. in the writer's room. <laughs> right, no disclaimer necessary. We right. only have time for a couple of last questions, and I wanted to get, ask both, both of you have been in sort of reality-based or re reality-adjacent uh, series. Julia, in your case, it's Veep, and of course, Tobias, the crown playing Prince Philip. When going through something like that, and I'll go to each of you, Julia, after doing Veep, do you look at Washington through a different lens? I mean, do you look at news out of Washington differently than you did before being in that world? I actually do. Um, I spend a lot of time in Washington while making Veep, even before making Veep. Um, and I got a better understanding of the politics of the politics. <laughs> and um, so, yes, I, I I think of it differently now, um, and I have <clears throat> I have I have two feelings. I have more disdain for aspects of of the political world, and I have a lot more reverence for other aspects for those who, in my view, are trying to uh, do the right thing against sometimes what seems to be insurmountable odds. So I am, um, I'm, yes, that's my answer. Fast. And what about you, Tobias, about, did you emerge from that experience with a different lens on the monarchy or the royal family? Definitely, yes. Um, in, in all honesty, I hadn't thought very much about the monarchy prior to going into the show. I hadn't never been very interested in their lives. And so, um, yeah, and so through doing the show, I, yeah, obviously had to read up and learn and get a sense and try and get inside their skins. And um, I don't think it changed my politics, essentially, but I, I, it gave me a lot more um, respect for the sort of thoroughness with which they do their job, their sense of duty. Um, and yeah, so I, yes, I definitely, yes, definitely changed how I looked at that, that family uh, to a great extent. Hmm. That's fascinating. Unfortunately, we're out of time. This was a dream. We'll have to leave it there. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Tobias Menzies, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Anne. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for watching. Check out what interviews we have coming up over at WashingtonPostLive.com and register, find out more information, and visit us again about our upcoming programs. Again, I am Ann Hornaday, Chief Film Critic for The Washington Post. Thank you for joining me.